So we're continuing to look at uh, electrical force and so and the equation that we're using is F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. And so suppose we have just three charges there's a charge, there's a charge, and there's a charge. And so we're going to call this Q1, Q2, and Q3. Okay, and so now what we want to do is I want to say, the question I want to ask is, What's the total force on Q1? Well, first off, we have to say uh, what the charges are. And so we're going to say that the charges are, um, let's just make up some numbers. So I'm going to say 2 nanocoulombs for Q1. And I'm going to say Q2 is negative 3 nanocoulombs. And I'm going to say Q3 is going to be 1.5 nanocoulombs. Now, we're also going to need some distances. So, and I'm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this distance right here is 6.4 centimeters. So, 0 0.064 meters. And we're going to say that this distance here is going to be 5 centimeters. So 0 0.050 0 meters. Okay, so now I'm going to say F12 is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared which is my value for k and then I'm going to have q1 is 2 now I gotta remember what that nano means nano means, think about it for a second nano means times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs and then Q2 is negative 3 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. And they're separated by a distance of 0 0.064 meters. And I gotta square that. So I'm gonna say F12 is gonna be 9 EE9 times 2 EE negative 9 times negative 3 EE negative 9 divided by 0 0.064 squared and I get negative 1.32 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. And then I've got, so that's one force and then I've got F13 is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Q1 stays the same, 2 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. But now Q3 is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. And now we divide that by 0 0.05 meters squared. All right, so I've got a lot of this on my calculator already, so I'm going to just back up. And instead of negative 3, I'm going to change that to 1.5 
and then instead of 0.064 I'm going to change that to 0 0.050 and I'm going to hit it and I'm going to get 1.08 1.08 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. Okay, so what do I do with these numbers? Do I just add them? Do I subtract them? What do I do with them? Well, the answer is that these are actually vectors. And so what we have to do is we have to add them using vectors. So I'm going to take another sheet of paper here and I'm going to copy down that line and I'm going to say this is my force 1, 2 and I have to ask is it attractive or repulsive? Well, I'm going through this quick but since Q1 and Q2 have opposite signs, this one's positive, this one's negative, Q1 and Q2 are going to attract each other. So suppose I just put my finger down on Q2 so it can't run away from me, which way is Q1 going to move just because of Q2? Well, it's going to move that way. So my force vector is going to go that way and it's going to have a value of negative 1.32. Well, I don't need the negative anymore because I'm just handling that with my the direction of my vector. And so I've got a vector going this way. Now, tip to tail, I got to ask myself, well, this here Q1 is positive, Q3 is positive, so if I just consider Q3 is pushing Q1 this way, so Q3 is going to push Q1 that way. So if I'm going to add tip to tail, what I'm going to do is more or less, I'm going to go like that, in that direction. And that's going to be my force um, two three. I'm sorry, force one three. And it's going to have a value of 1.08 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. All right. So now, what I really need to do is I need to figure out this angle in here. So I'm going to say that that angle there is going to be, well let me extend this out a little bit, or let me just see if I can just get it this way. That's probably the better way to do it. Roughly speaking, I'm going to call it 103 degrees. So if you think about it, This is 103 degrees, and so this is going to be 103 degrees. And so I've roughly got what I want. I've got a vector coming in here, and then I've got a 103 degree angle, and I've got a vector coming out this way. Now, what I want to do is I want to go through it, and I want to do it scale drawing, and I want to use law of sines and law of cosines to figure out what the net force is. So that's going to have to roll, in, roll over into the next video.